All right, so I wanted to make this video because of a comment that was made to me by the dealer who sold me this watch when I bought the watch from him. And he said something along the lines of these pre-ceramic GMTs are flying off the shelves. Like he can't keep them in inventory. You know, they sell so fast. And uh, I know that GMTs are popular and I know that you know, they're in demand, but to say that specifically about pre-ceramic GMTs uh, kind of caught me off guard. So today I want to talk about what I think is going to happen to the price of pre-ceramic GMTs, specifically the 16710 in 2022 and beyond. And most crucially, I want to compare it to the price performance of the ceramic Pepsi because I think that comparison can give us the most insight. Yes, they're both Pepsis uh, and they're both GMTs, but they're such different watches fundamentally. You know, I would say that their similarities end with GMT and, and Pepsi bezel. And when you're talking 16710, you know, the Pepsi bezel is not inherent to the watch. Uh, so first I wanna look at what has happened to the 16710 in the last year. The most basic tool for this is Chrono24. They have a very nice little graph at the bottom of each listing, uh, depending on which watch you're looking at. So here we're looking at a 16710 in very good condition. As you can see, over the last year, it started off around 12 and a half thousand on average, and it's slowly but surely rised to about 14.2, 14.3. So for convenience sake, let's just call it a $2,000 increase over the last year, which comes out to about a 16% return on investment, which if you look at the stock market, for example, you can expect about a 10% increase annually. So to get a 16% increase on a 20 year old watch, I think is fantastic. I mean, the real return on investment for these watches is the pleasure that you derive from them daily. You get to enjoy these watches, not only for free, but you could say that you're being paid to enjoy these watches. And if you genuinely do enjoy these watches very much like I do, it's a, it's a phenomenal proposition. Position. I mean, I'm being paid to wear something that I love and, and appreciate. So that's the 16710. If we go over to the 126710 BLRO, the, the Pepsi, uh, we can see that it started off at about 19.3 thousand and it rose, you know, pretty drastically to about 25.4 thousand, which is about a 30% increase. Uh, in price. That's about double what you can expect from a pre-ceramic Pepsi. And I get that, but here's the thing. These modern watches, these modern Rolexes, uh, are still being made. Okay, they're still being produced. You know, if you look at Chrono24, it's flooded with new examples. In fact, if I try to filter the results and I scroll down here to, you know, new versus pre-owned, there's only 64 pre-owned examples of the BLRO, but there's 179 examples new or unworn. You know, so that's pretty telling as to what's happening here. Uh, that 30% increase that we see on the secondary market for this watch is not organic, okay? It's not. These watches are sitting at, you know, gray market dealers waiting to be sold, and these dealers are increasing their price, you know, in accordance with one another, and they're just slightly outdoing one another, and the price just goes up and up, and the hype goes up and up, and you have Instagram and YouTube, and you know, all these places creating this hype for this watch, where in, in actuality, there's not that much true organic growth. You know, it, it's, it's just not there. Yes, people are buying this watch at that price. I mean, it, it is being sold. I'm not saying that they're all just sitting around uh, not being bought. But if we look at uh, this other resource that I like, it's called watchcharts.com. We can see that uh, here's the distribution of, um, of listings, not on Chrono24, uh, but simply on the forums. Now I can click over to eBay here. You've got unsold, so these are ones that are being listed. And you can see that at this price, 31,000, even 28,000 unworn, uh, they're not being sold. 
all right there, nobody's buying them on eBay for that price whereas these red dots indicate sold watches and these ones down here for 23,000 uh, 23 21 these did sell okay so it, it's selling down here around 23 24 thousand uh, but anything above 26 thousand is not selling on eBay you know the average price on chrono 24 is you know 28 thousand 29 this one's 32 thousand uh, 30 thousand you know they're way up there and if watch charts is any indication of what people are willing to pay for this watch they're not willing to pay thirty thousand dollars for it uh, if we go back to the forums I prefer the forums chart I think uh, we can actually see a more fair distribution here we can see on the forums chart that watches for about twenty four thousand you know twenty four right around here uh, are not being bought you have some cases here this one sold this one sold for twenty three thousand uh, but a lot of the sold ones hover around twenty two twenty three um you know right around there it's sort of an anomaly for them to sell above twenty four thousand on the forums uh and there are other factors there of course too you know you're cutting out the the brick and mortar operation of of dealers who are the people listing on chrono 24 so you're not paying for rent and staff and you know all that that you have to pay for if you go through a dealer if we jump over to the one six seven one oh on this fantastic resource watch charts uh, and we scroll down here and we look at this chart I think this chart is very telling unlike the ceramic version you've got a very concentrated distribution down here around 15,000 okay 14 15,000 so I mean I can go through all of these but they're all selling for about 14,000 okay You've got some cheaper ones down here selling for 11,000, uh, you know, 11, 12, but generally it's hovering around 12, 13, 14,000. You have anomalies like this, you know, this is a, a brand new in box version for 30,000, but even listings up here at like 16,000, uh, mint condition, I mean, we all know that that doesn't actually mean mint condition, that just means it was polished recently. But yeah, 16,000, that's that's too high and you can see it's not it's not being bought so if I flip back and forth uh, between these two charts which one looks like a safer bet to you for me personally I like the look of this chart much more this chart uh, resembles more of a blue chip stock whereas this chart resembles like Bitcoin and not even Bitcoin it, this resembles like Dogecoin okay and I can totally see maybe not this year maybe not next year but eventually in the next five to ten years this could come down this could crash in a way I think at, a, at some point people are gonna realize that this watch is not a $25,000 watch it's not a $30,000 watch it's a $10,000 watch pretty much okay if you want to pay two or three grand premium for it then fine but I think there's gonna be a point where people are not going to pay these premiums a because the watch isn't you know a, a thirty thousand dollar watch horologically but B it's still being made so there is that glimmer of hope that you could get it from a Rolex AD you know Part of the reason why I like the pre-ceramics in general is because you can't get them from Rolex anymore. They're discontinued, they're gone. And any price increase that we see on the pre-ceramics is going to be organic. Again, looking at this chart, this to me screams organic price rise. Same with the chart on Chrono 24. It's just very gradual. Uh, but significant nonetheless. I mean, you know, it's just stable. It's stable. And I don't think that if people were to stop buying Rolex, I don't think that this price would crash very much. I think that, yeah, it would see a dip in price for sure, but it wouldn't crash. They're too strong of a commodity. And I believe it's that way because they're not being made anymore. And once all of these watches are gone they're gone you know people misuse them people mistreat them they lose them they get them stolen yeah these watches disappear you may think that oh you know they're still floating around and being traded but you know over the course of time a lot of these examples uh, go away and especially when you get into like unpolished or stickered examples or new old stock I mean those are few and far between and 
I think if you have the money and you know you love these watches and you appreciate the collectability of them, I think that's the way to go. Unpolished, new old stock, you know, something like that because those are definitely few and far between. Dealers, as soon as they get their hands on these watches, uh, if you trade them in or, or sell them to a dealer, the first thing they do is polish them. Then it's no longer an unpolished watch and that's one less unpolished watch out there for us to appreciate and buy. Yeah, hopefully this was insightful. I believe that the better bet long term is pre-ceramics. It may seem right now that the ceramic models like the GMT and the Sub and you know all these modern Rolexes are what's hot. That's true, there is a lot of hype around these models, but they're not worth the price that they're going for. And I don't think that they're necessarily a safe bet long term. Uh, do I think that you're ever going to lose money on them? Probably not, realistically. I don't think that you're ever gonna lose money if you buy a modern Rolex, no way. Uh, but I, I don't think that you're gonna see the same organic and steady price rise as the pre-ceramics, you know? So anyway, yeah, I hope you enjoyed and until next time, peace out.